Welcome back to my reviews of the Beast Wars ongoing comic book series. We are now on the sixth issue of this series, and the final one of this first chapter, Savage Landing. This issue picks up where the last one left off, with Tarantulas having infiltrated the Axelon, and Rattrap in hiding. Kind of the reverse of the last cartoon episode we reviewed, where Rattrap had infiltrated the Dark Side. Tarantulas mentions using the Energon on this planet to usher in a new world order. Apparently he's a big NWO fan. Meanwhile, outside, Dinobot rips Waspinator's arm off and smacks him upside the head with it. Aww, poor Waspinator. Terrorsaur spouts how he hopes that Dinobot destroys Megatron so that he can take over as leader. Hmm, you're acting very Starscream-y there, Terrorsaur. But Nyx gets her revenge on her former captor, even pulling out her swords, which is a nod to the toy that she is based on, the Bat Mode Optimus Primal. It even has the little notch in the back of the blade like the toy. Hmm, now I kinda want to see a female version of Bat Optimus Primal. Okay, okay, I can't just keep putting gender-bent art of Beast Wars characters in every video I do. Or can I? No, no, better move on with this review. Back inside the Axelon, Tarantula schemes to call down the Maximal Stasis Pods and convert the protoforms inside into his own personal army and overthrow Megatron. Oh, great. That's all we need. An army of Black Arachnias. Wait, that actually sounds kind of awesome. Well, not for the Maximals, it doesn't. Apparently, Rattrap isn't quite the warrior that he is in the cartoon so he has to come up with another means to stop Tarantulas from stealing the pods. Outside, Optimus Primal tells Megatron that he talks too much. Oh, you have no idea, Optimus. You have no idea. Why do you always talk to yourself? Oh, I simply have a penchant for intelligent conversation. Megatron is about to blast Optimus, but Nyx throws Pterosaur into the path of the laser, saving him. On board the Axelon, Rattrap has a surprise for Tarantulas, as he appears in an exosuit, which definitely feels like one part alien's homage, get away from her, you, as well as a nod to that episode of Beast Machines where Rattrap got a power suit from Megatron. He chucks Tarantulas out a window and gets the ship's shields working. The Maximals retreat into the safety of the force field but Dinobot is trapped outside with the Predacons. He makes a brave stand, but he is stabbed in the back and through the chest by Tarantulas, who's not really looking much worse for wear, considering that he was just thrown out a window. The Predacons gang up on Dinobot, but thankfully he is saved by Optimus Primal activating the Axelon's plasma cannons. Sometime later, Optimus is questioning if he made the right decisions. And we see Dinobot, who is still injured from the battle. Apparently the CR chambers in this comic aren't miracle workers like they are in the cartoon, as we can see that Dinobot is using a cane, and he has an eye patch on his raptor head. Aww. I'm not sure if this is cute or sad. I guess it's both. But now I kind of want a Dinobot figure like this. Come on, Hasbro. You like doing easy repaints and battle damage. Give me a pirate Dinobot. Sadly, Dinobot says that he's leaving because he is no longer able to fight. And knowing Dinobot, if I had to guess, I assume that he plans to commit seppuku. Aww. But Optimus Primal tells him the story of the Dinobots, the great Autobot warriors who mysteriously disappeared. Hmm, you wouldn't just so happen to have some of those guys in stasis pods, would you, Optimus? And with that, he manages to convince Dinobot to stay. Aww. And that is the end of this issue. This might be the best one yet. I didn't really like how Rattrap was kind of a scaredy cat, or scaredy rat in his case, but the whole exosuit thing was a pretty cool homage. I was really worried that Dinobot might die in this issue. You never know. This is a new continuity. 
And while he may not have died saving all of humanity, saving the Maximals definitely wouldn't have been the worst death I could imagine. And I really like that they referenced the G1 Dinobots, something that they surprisingly didn't do in the original cartoon. I mean, his name is Dinobot, and they never brought up the fact that there was a team of Autobots called the Dinobots? Also, somehow Dinobot has never heard of the G1 Dinobots? How? That's your name! And the original Dinobots were legends! You're telling me that this is just a big coincidence? And of course, this issue closes out with some Maximal Mailbag, where it seems a lot of new people are getting into Beast Wars. Which makes me very happy to see. I'm so glad that new fans, whether they be existing Transformers fans or not, are getting to experience Beast Wars for the first time. That's part of the reason why I started reviewing the cartoon on my channel. So be sure to be like Emma and go and watch the whole series on Tubi. And then be like Callie and go out and buy all the Kingdom toys. Speaking of Callie, she has some cute pixel art of Dinobot. Which reminds me, I need to find a pixel artist to do some emojis and badges for me, if I ever hope to set up the memberships on my channel. Maybe I can find Callie and commission her to do some. Well, let me know what you thought of this latest issue of Beast Wars down in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and do all that other fun stuff, especially if you want to keep up with all my latest uploads. Because apparently some viewers are having trouble seeing all the videos that I've posted lately. So make sure you smash that like button and ring that bell. And I'll see you back here next month for Beast Wars Issue 7. And the beginning of the next chapter of this comic series. Simply titled, Pod. Which will apparently feature the debut of Black Arachnia. Funny how we just reviewed her debut episode of the cartoon too. So, see you next time for that.